This is a turnout. This is called turnout this coat. This is called it's a turnout, turnout coat and, and, a, like and turnout helmet. And, and this is because you turned out for the fire. Nice. You did yourself. Whoa. Hi there and welcome back. Uh, we'd like to first say thank you to our, subs our new subscribers and our old subscribers um, and say thank you to our viewers. We had lots of really great feedback on our Oatman Arizona video and uh, stay tuned there will be a part two uh, for the Oatman videos. Yes. So, But in this week's video we were started looking around for things to do in the Phoenix area. So we went to TripAdvisor. They have great ideas and they have ratings. They do. They do. And one of the things that was really really high on their list was the Hall of Flame Museum of Firefighting, and that's where we went this week. It was flaming amazing. It was <laughs> truly amazing. And we'll let Claudia tell us, and she'll get us started. So stay tuned. Cool. Oh, hi. Welcome to the Hall of Flame Firefighting Museum. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. Wow. How cool is that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so the front comes from an actual fire truck? Yeah, it's that framed photo right there. How cool is that? Which one? Oh, right here. Right here. Let's take a look. How yes and no. It's, it's cool, but the reason it's that way, it got hit by a train. So hi, welcome to the Hall of Flame again, world's largest firefighting museum. Uh, we have over 35,000 square feet. Today in the gallery we have 90 vehicles and a patch collection of over 7,000 from departments all over the world. A little bit better layout and what we have going on. We have six galleries, four major here, two here. Behind me is Gallery 1. This is going to be antique 1700s to 1900s, hand pulled, horse pulled, hand pumped, one of them is horse pumped. I will let you figure out how a horse pumps a fire truck, but I'll let you know it's the baby blue one, so keep an eye out for it. Coming out of there, we have a theater. It plays a brief history of our museum. It's about 10 minutes long. I recommend going there first. You get to see an idea of who we are before you see what we have. In the back of there, we have our National Firefighting Hall of Heroes that comes into Gallery 2. It's going to be early motorized 1900s to 1940s. Gallery 3 is going to be more 50s, 60s, 70s, and Gallery 4 is more that didn't fit into Gallery 2. So 1900s to 1940s again, and wildland firefighting in the back. We have two very, very important vehicles. In Gallery 3, we have Rescue 4 from 9-11. In Gallery 4, we have the Granite Mountain Hotshot Buggy from Prescott, Arizona. Everything in the museum is real. It's all been beautifully restored. There's no replicas, so as many photos as you like or videos, um, but we ask that you don't touch. So okay. back in Gallery 4, there's our safety house exhibit. It has uh, videos on fire safety, interactive kitchen, another fireman's pole, another area where they can dress up and climb around and do things. Um, but then there's that fire truck in Gallery 2, that's an antique Miami rig that again has turnout gear so people can get dressed and get on, okay. pretend to be firemen, it's really cute. Okay, so. Great, so thanks. this one is from 1725. It is our oldest rig. Um, it is about seven years older than George Washington and older than the United States of America. So it's actually originally an English rig. Um, something interesting about how the, it was engineered is that it includes these arm bars here, so you can see it's pumped like this from the sides, but also includes these foot pedals here and here. So when I move this up and down, you see that those also move up and down. So they would have, you know, maybe 10 men on either side, one or two here in the middle, and they would be pumping with their legs. And this was to help with the pumping and also to help with the balance. You can see it's a fairly small rig. You're pumping back and forth as a tendency to rock like this. Uh -huh. So having those two men there help with the balance. So this one takes about 22 men to pump. Guesses on how many it takes to pump this. I'll take any of them. 10. 10? 50. 50? 50 is correct. Did you look in the book? Did you cheat? I saw it on the film. <laughs> okay, gotcha. With this step back, I'll show you how it works. So these benches, they fold down. You have 12 men up on either side, about 13 on the ground, fit, uh, 25, 25, 50 total. So this whole thing moves like this. Oh, wow. Wow. And you can see these arm bars, they come down to be locked into here. This becomes one long arm bar, that becomes one long arm bar. It's pumped up and down like that. Um, another thing that makes this particular uh, rig important are these murals you see here on the center console. When we were first received this into our collection, the entire vehicle was white, it was whitewashed. And our restorer was peeling off that paint and he found those murals underneath. So we believe them to be the ones from when it was in operation in 1844. I know the Smithsonian has one of these. I think ours is cooler. I'm biased. But... <laughs> was it horse drawn? No, actually, it was originally pulled by hand instead of horse. So if you factor in the 50 people it takes to pump it, 
you need people to pull it, and that people that are pulling it are probably gonna be your second team to come in, because after 10 minutes, your arms are gonna give out. Could have taken about 100 men to transport and operate this apparatus. Thank so you. We're gonna see how stylish it is. If you turn on English rig, American rig. English they are about 100 years apart, but the rule still stays the same. You can tell the difference between an American rig and a European one by how stylized it is. So if you go like a couple rows down, you get to what we call Cinderella Row. Giant parade carriages. They weren't really functional fire trucks. Their job was to be pretty and to be pulled in parades. So Here's that horse-drawn and horse-pumped engine Claudia spoke about. Look carefully at the sign and you can see how the horses were used to pump the water. Apparently, it wasn't a very big seller. This engine used steam to pump the water. It could pump around 700 gallons a minute, a lot more than the horses could pump. It came along just a couple of years after the horse-pumped engine which is why the horse pumped engine went by the wayside. This was new technology. Because I can't. So this is the inside of a fire truck that was originally from the city of Miami. Very cool. I am 100% certain. I could not drive this. No. But it's very cool. This is a turnout. This is called turnout this coat. Is called it's a turnout, turnout coat and, and, a, and turnout helmet. And, and this is because you turned out for the fire. Nice. You get yourself turned out. In nice. the old days, you turned out with your bucket. Yeah. But then as time went on, then you turned out in equipment ready to fight the fire. I see. And then, okay, so if you were going to a fire, Where's the, I mean, there's, yeah, I'll show it to you. Where's the oxygen? Like, where, well, where would you put it? So the oxygen goes on your back in the tank. Okay. And then you put that mask on your face. So you take the helmet off? Yeah, you pull the helmet back and then, then you pull this on your face. Okay. And then you put that screen to keep it on your face. Oh, I see. Whoa. Mm -hmm. That's a boatload of stuff. That's a boatload of stuff. Oh, holy moly. Yeah, it gets hot. Well, watching those fire shows takes on a whole new meeting, right? Yes, it does. So, so you're going to go home and watch Ladder 49. I'm going to go home and watch Ladder 49 yes. and only the Brave. Yes. That'd be awesome. Okay. All right. This is Chuck, and he is the boss of this place. 30 years with the Glendale Fire Department. Yes, 33. 33 years. That's astounding. Yeah, there you go. That. It's heavy, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's, it's heavier course, than one of, if it has If something falls on you, you don't want to have it uh, too late. Hurt, that, hurt you. That's a true statement. While there's no doubt it is amazing to see firefighting equipment up close, we must never forget the devastation and danger fire represents. And we must never forget the brave men and women that run into the fire while we run away. The Hall of Flame Museum of Firefighting shelters memorabilia from two of this country's most devastating fire events. Wildfires are unpredictable and frightening and can destroy vast tracts of forests, homes, businesses, and animal habitat. One such fire was the Yarnell Hill Fire. It was started June 28, 2013 by a lightning strike near the town of Yarnell, Arizona. The fire was thought to be contained, but it began to increase in size and intensity the next day. The incident commander brought in the Granite Mountain Hotshot crew to assist. 20 men comprised this well-trained and experienced team. On the 30th of June, as they fought the fire, the winds picked up and the fire increased to 10 times its original size. 
The Granite Mountain crew was caught in the firestorm and 19 of the team's 20 men were killed. The Hall of Flame proudly houses the Granite Mountain hotshot buggy as a permanent memorial to the bravery of her crew. And then, who of us living in 2001 can forget the terrible events of September 11th? It's one of those days and times that are etched in our memories forever. We know where we were and what we saw. The New York City Fire Department has five heavy rescue trucks that serve the city. These vehicles are rolling toolboxes holding everything needed for heavy rescue. The men and women that are part of these rescue crews are the best of the best. They are prepared for every possible scenario. But that terrible day was unlike any other. All five heavy rescue trucks and their crews raced to the Twin Towers. On the crew of Rescue 4 were five of the regular crew and two more men from other crews that jumped onto the rig to help. They were assigned to the South Tower. They rushed into the building and up the fire stairs, helping people down, showing the way, hushing fears, and bringing comfort just by their presence. Remember how Mr. Rogers taught us to look for the helpers? Well, they were there that day. All of the heavy rescue firefighters from all five of the heavy rescue trucks in New York City were killed that day. All of the men that rode on this very truck sacrificed their lives to help others. The only heavy rescue truck that survived was this one. It was damaged, but was repaired and put back into service. When it was retired, the Hall of Flame brought it to Arizona, restored it, and gave it a permanent spot here as a reminder of the brave men and women that died that day and those that continue to put their lives on the line for their fellow men. They were, they were the original emotional support animal. The Dalmatians went along the lines with, it was the coach dog, it was the status symbol in, in Europe. Mm -hmm. So that was the, the one, I mean, you could have a German Shepherd, you could have had a Beagle, you could have had a Poodle, but the Dalmatian was a status symbol. So now the Dalmatian being a high maintenance, or a uh, high energy, very intense dog, mm -hmm. um, with, the, with the horses, they, they bonded, they kept each other calm. The Dalmatians slept with the horses. They kept them calm in, in there. They were also the alarm system. Horse thefts were still a big part of the, the, the everyday way of life. So they were they were a, a protector of the horses so nobody would steal them. You had a call, the horse stables automatically opened. The horses were trained to go stand where they needed to stand in front of the pumper, the steamer or whatever it was they were gonna pull. The Dalmatians would keep them calm and keep them patient until the guys got there. They got the steamer full of coal or fuel or wood and ready to go. Then the Dalmatians would take off ahead of the horses. They were a pre-siren. So they're 50 to 70 feet ahead of the horses barking. So now you're walking down Main Street, you got a dog yapping at your heels going, what the heck? You look back and you see, okay, here comes a big steamer with three horses pulling. I need to get out of the way. Because sirens weren't, hadn't really evolved yet. So it's bell, dogs barking, horses, bells that's how we're notifying you to get out of the way interesting once we got to the fire we'd set the steamer up unpin the hitch and take the horses around the corner and the dogs would go with them keeping the horses calm and again keeping people from stealing them okay so they were a multifaceted support dog yeah, we can do it the old-fashioned <laughs> way do it the old-fashioned way so okay well that is going to wrap up this video what was your what are your what are your thoughts about the hall of flame it was amazing the people, the staff was very knowledgeable and, and available and helpful. It was just really great. There was a lot of good equipment there, I, stuff I'd never seen before. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot. There was a lot more than just fire engines. There was fire helmets and hoses and hose reels. And the she talked about patches. Those are the patches that are worn by 
firefighters on their uniforms, yeah. and they come from all over the world. It's over 7,000 of Over 7,000, and there's actually a book that's indexed. So you can, if you come to visit and you have, uh, a, want to look at, to see if your fire department has a patch there, you can look it up very easy and then you can find it to so tell you exactly where to find it. So yeah. it's really um, an amazing collection, really, really amazing collection. Yeah. It's really cool. Excellent. Um, we would definitely recommend that you, you make the time to go there. Two thumbs up, yeah. for sure. The museum is open Monday through Saturday, 9 to 5, and on Sundays from noon to 4. Um, the cost to get in is adults are $10, unless you have life experience. <laughs> Senior means dis senior discount. Senior discount. <laughs> 62 and over, I believe it is. That's $8. Students from 6 to 17 are also $8. Children 6 and under are... I'll link it to the website. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Children... That's where the senior uh, moment comes in. <laughs> senior moment comes in. It's like we can't remember how much little kids are. Anyway, it's well worth um, a few hours of your time. One of the advantages is it is right across from the Phoenix Zoo. Yeah. So if you do come to Phoenix in a warmer time of year and your little kids are cranky and they're warm, they're too, they're, they're hot. It's air conditioned. It's super air conditioned. It's so beautiful It will be there. pleasant for the kids to enjoy some time and in an air conditioned place. There's plenty of place for them to play as well. So there's, you know, the fire safety house, they can climb on things, there's a fire pole, there's little videos to watch, it's amazing. They've and then there's that truck. Miami truck they can they can get in as there's well. There's the Miami, Arizona truck. Yes. <laughs> Not Miami, Florida. <laughs> Miami, Arizona uh, fire truck that they can climb on, they can put on the turnout gear. Um, it's all kinds of great things. So we totally recommend it. Um, give it a thumbs up, thumbs up. And speaking of thumbs up, if you like this video, Give us a thumbs up Give us a and thumb. subscribe. Tell your friends, your neighbors, your relatives, <laughs> that people on the street. <laughs> He's getting desperate again. <laughs> we would love it if you would subscribe and ring that notification bell so that you can get notified when we do upload a new video. Anyway, uh, that's all for now and we appreciate all you do. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.